And welcome back to On the Record with Tiffany and Kevin on 930 AM. The Answer, home of conservative talk radio, proud American descendants of the formerly enslaved. How's about that, we Tiffany? We're talking about hair donation and transplantation mm -hmm. with the wonderful Dr. Lashar David. All right. Um, so earlier we discussed pride. Mm -hmm. I'm a proud, we're proud black folk. With diabetes. <laughs> proud and private. Proud, proud and private. private. <laughs> and uh, let's talk about that because, absolutely, you know, that coupled with, you know, how the system actually is, that we don't diagnose kidney disease until stage three. Once you've been at stage three for three months, and often the disease is detected, in stages one and two and and not and patients are not informed we know that that is that is a, a matter that has to be addressed but when we get to the back end of this mm -hmm. and we're talking about so many comorbidities that lead to kidney disease diabetes hypertension uh obesity cardiovascular disease pride as the Bible says, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not something that you want to <laughs> pride goes before the fall, you know, <laughs> really. but that's what we, that's what, what you're seeing in your research. So how are you, what did that make you think? Man, I, I just, I, at first I, w I would say I was taken aback. You know, I was, I've been hearing the the private for many, many years. I've been, I've been trying to, to understand um, how the, the black community is engaging with transplant donation, kidney disease as a whole for, for several years, goodness, for, for many years, over a decade. And um, I had never really heard the proud piece. And when I heard the proud piece, I had to take, I had to take a step back and say, okay, well, what's going on here? What's really motivating that or what's really stopping people from sharing because in that pride we aren't sharing about the things that are going on individually amongst our family which could help other people coming behind us mm -hmm. to be better prepared or aware of things that they need to be on the lookout for now granted in some cases there may be um fam it, things that are embedded in our families um, habits, traditions that get passed down. And that's why we may think that some diseases are genetic, but they may not be. They may just be embedded in terms of our practices and behaviors mm -hmm. and beliefs and that kind of thing. And so some of those may be modifiable, but there are also some things that are genetic, um, some genetic causes to kidney disease. And if we're not talking about it, we're suffer We're literally suffering in silence. And we already know that kidney disease is a silent killer. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's just silence a, a across the board. We're not talking about it. And then it, it lingers silently. And then we don't get diagnosed officially until it's really, really bad, until we really, really feel bad. I've had patients say to me, you know, I just, I just thought I felt tired. And then I got a transplant and man, I was really bad. And then they acknowledge it. When they start to feel better, they finally acknowledge how bad it was. But, you know, in talking to black men, I, that's where I saw the pride initially. And I thought, oh, I said, that's just, you know, a black male thing. I just thought like, you know, trying to be, you know, um, proud, trying wow. to be the, you know, strong, like strong black, black man. That's what I thought. That's what I thought it was. But to hear the private proud black folk came from a black woman. Mm -hmm. And so to hear it come from another side, that really made me start to think, well, I need to dig a little bit deeper into, you know, what's kind of driving that. But I think, uh, I just think back to when I was a kid, it was, you know, children are to be, you know, seen and not heard. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, this is grown folks business. You know, there were things that we just didn't talk about. I still don't know why my great, you know, grandmother passed away. And it could be something that we're dealing with now because we don't have these conversations. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just so important, I think, that, you know, it, it, we don't have to suffer alone. We don't have to suffer out that mm -hmm. full stop. We don't have to suffer um, if we are, if we're more open to talking about what's going on with us, we can get help sooner. Um, we don't have to wait until we get to stage four 
of kidney disease where we we direly start to need you know transplant or or dialysis or something along those lines. We don't have to wait that long. Um, and I and I just I I'm it is my it is my desire. Um, and I'm gonna get off my soapbox in a minute. Keep going. It is my desire. <laughs> it is my desire that we start having these conversations. Like if I could get on a foghorn and, and go to different communities and just share with people, like like our silence is killing us. Yeah. Um, our silence is really killing us. You know, one of the things that we always, yeah, one of the things I always say, you know, uh, when we go out in the field and we're talking with people, I always say, hey, if I told you my blood pressure was, and I pull some random numbers, was 155 over 145, you know, how many, see right there, right? How many people would know, hey, dude, you're about to check out of this planet if you don't go get that situation taken care of? Because we've been told, you know, we have enough knowledge about blood pressure, the majority of us do, that we know that's a bad situation. Right. Or if I said, you know, uh, my blood sugar was, you know, 450, mm-hmm. right? And that, that, that was my, let's say it was my, my blood sugar is 450. Everybody's like, oh my God, dude, you got a, your blood pressure is super high. You have a, this unbelievable uh, right. uh, blood sugar. How are you still alive? Right. But that we know what those numbers, approximately what those numbers mean and how and that we're, I could possibly be in trouble. We may, know, we may not know all the details, mm-hmm. but we know enough to say, dude, you got to get to a physician quick. Right. Right? right. You're gonna have problems. And so that's one of the things that are that that we emphasize with know your numbers, right? Know what EGFR is, yes. right? That's how well your 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 kidneys are functioning and cleaning your blood. Know what a UACR is, right? That's how well your as if your kidneys have any damage, if there's any mm-hmm. albumuria. I said it right this time, Tiffany. <laughs> AKA protein spilling into your urine. Mm-hmm. And those are two numbers that we, we've been really emphasizing with everyone. It's not just and enough to get screened, also, but to know what they mean. Go ahead, right. Tiffany, I'm sorry. And we've also been educating people because part of, of doing this is you have to educate the leadership. Mm-hmm. So there is a genetic link to African Americans. It's called APOL1. Mm-hmm. And uh, for for me, like my personal story on this is that is is the very same thing. You know, we have uh, relatives in my family, and if you could see my office on the back wall, I keep a list of, of everybody that well, it's not everybody mm-hmm. now, but but of of people that have passed from a AP from uh, kidney disease in my family because that was what prompted me to look and see if there was something genetic going on. Yeah. And there it is. Yeah. But even in my family, nobody wanted to talk about mm-hmm. that it could be genetic. <laughs> when we just buried my cousin, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before that. I'm sorry. Uh, and um, thank you. And she had nine strokes, 50 years old, and they, it was from diabetes. Mm-hmm. She had diabetes. Her diabetes was out of control. And so uh, while we were at this funeral, I started talking to family members about APOL1 uh, because people were in from all over. So we had people come, that came in from Louisiana. It's probably about 200 of us, which is a small gathering of the Joneses. But <laughs> there's a lot of us. But... Um, and when I started talking to them about it, people were like, I think that's my, I think my dad mm. may have had that, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, but they were reluctant for me to tell everybody on the microphone about that. Mm. They were like, well, people are going to be, you know, that it's genetic. It means that we, oh. what if we something wrong. I married the wrong person. Right. So first of all, that's, that that framing mm-hmm. of this is the wrong framing. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it has nothing to do, you you cannot do something wrong 
in this situation. But That's here's the situation, the though, Tiffany. When people hear genetic, they think inevitability. But no, genetic just means you have the potential. And if your environment, it, it keeps keeps putting you at risk, right? So right. when I hear, oh, I genetically have, am, am predispositioned for a particular thing, right? Which means if I continue with a lifestyle and a behavior is more likely to uh, to activate in my body than mm -hmm. if, uh, if than anything else, right? Because we know that, go ahead, I'm sorry. And with APOL1, most people, is it, it's not something that awakens in everyone, mm -hmm. right? Most people who have those genetic alleles, it's not going to awaken in you. What you have to be conscious of and aware of is that if two people get together with the alleles, then your potential for the disease awakening arise, uh, rises exponentially. Mm -hmm. That's where you can be proactive. Right. That's where you can go, okay, uh, you know, I, I adore you and I want to marry you, but I need you to take this cheek swap. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, right. You're going to see if we're cousins. That's what you got to see. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're going to get a lot of feedback from that one, Tiffany. <laughs> you, know, like, I mean, you, you want to know that beforehand. <sighs> plan appropriately on having kids. Look, this is for the, I mean, we're on the radio, things, right? We, we're reasons, not at the house. There's a lot of reasons that you would want to, to know that you need to be proactive and talk about what's going on with us disease-wise. Yeah, that, that's... You, you can... Eat right, eat better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, a, ten, but, a five to ten percent change in your BMI. But Boom. but you also, Tiffany, right? This is America, right? And and some of us, I, I have jelly beans. You know, I'm a jelly bean addict, and I'm I keep them out of the house, right? But we are, and I believe in American exceptionalism. I always say this on the channel: is that mm -hmm. we are innovative. We have medications we have the idea that you can take somebody's organ be they alive or deceased we have put, dr davis's studying and and learning what uh -huh. to say what's right how we have behavioral therapists studying our so we patients. but so it's a matter of for most of us one i'm for the eat, eating right and then yes. I, i'm for that right because i put on a few pounds and tiffany's called me out publicly trying to I challenge me on the weight loss i called you both out publicly it wasn't okay easy. But we have medications. We have we have SGLT2 inhibitors, which everyone on this station has heard me talk about. It's like the iPhone has landed and most people are unaware about unaware of it. Right. And so we have that. We have uh, we have living donations. Right. Even with uh, even under the strict guidelines of to be a donor. Right. That's benefiting people. And I'd give a kidney for you, babe. I love you that much. Uh, you know, I got some relatives I wouldn't give one for. I, I got some relatives. I'd be like, and you got to figure this thing out. But we have the technology that's available. It's just a matter of mm -hmm. communicating it. We know about eating. We know about transplantation. Right. It's just informing people. And that's why I think that proud, private, you know, in this case, black woman, right? That right. is deadly. Yeah. Because right? we always Absolutely. say it's a deadly thing. And we always say on this radio station, right? People who listen to us are conservative people, right? Is that the way you, the, the, the way black people in America are treated is how mm -hmm. everybody else is going to be treated. So just like they're withhold, just like I say they, I sound conspiracious, just mm -hmm. like we are uninformed oftentimes and don't have the education, there are other groups as well. So mm -hmm. that is the push, right? Is that, is, right. is that we're trying to do that. So I just went to a, a, a meeting a couple of nights ago here in uh, in San Antonio, and it was uh, hosted by uh, a local philanthropist, and, and uh, they brought a bunch of health uh, innovators together. And so there were five doctors present, and you know across different uh, disciplines. And so one was a cardiovascular doctor. I, I know her because she has this wonderful set of clinics. Um, here in, in San Antonio, she really works with the underserved. And so uh, she was, I, I was talking about kidney disease and yeah. what I see as the true bottleneck and, and uh, it's not a bottleneck, it's what is causing the explosion of kidney disease that we see. Mm. And that is uh, the 
detection of the disease that goes until stage three mm -hmm. with the lack of informing patients. Um, because it, in stages one, two, and three is when the SGLT2Is work the best. Okay, so the therapeutic that we have that is very simple to take mm -hmm. and then the tablet in, in many cases. Uh, it works best during that time where people are being observed and not informed. Right. That is a major problem. A major right. problem. So I'm, I, I'm, I mentioned that that's what the problem is, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and in, in what, what our organization has uncovered and, and studied. And this doctor says, Tiffany, I want to say two things. <laughs> she goes, uh, the same doctor, she works on the south side of San Antonio. Uh -huh. The north side of San Antonio is the side of San Antonio with that is considered to be well to do. She said the same doctors that's, that serve the north side of San Antonio serve the south side of San Antonio. We don't have that many doctors. Same one serve north and south. Um, there was a hospital in the south side of San Antonio and they were serving at that hospital as well. So she knew, you know, they're doing rounds here, they're doing rounds here. She said the quality of care that they gave on the south side was reprehensible. Wow. She said, I, she said, wow. everybody that's been there knows that what I'm saying is true. She mm -hmm. said, but I can prove that what you're saying is true mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. over and over again in my practice, I get patients in and I'm looking at their, because I get their entire medical record. You don't get right. that. She goes, I get their entire medical record and I'm looking at their medical record. And I'm seeing that for years they have been in kidney disease. And I'm the first person telling them right. that they have it. She said, and that happens over and over again. She said, and, and, and I could scream because our first order of business is to do no harm. Absolutely. See, but here's the deal, right? We're going to wrap this segment up is that, that for various reasons, physicians don't inform us of what the numbers are. Right. Some don't want us to feel bad. Some don't want us to cause us that's, that's undue anxiety. So All the reasons. I mean, there's a long list of them, depending on right. when you go and you read the literature. Right. And so that's the part where we we come in. Right. Tiff mm -hmm. and I and, and, and the different people who serve on the board of the Kidney Foundation. We, we, we believe that then if the if if the medical profession isn't going to actively try to educate us in a very coordinated fashion. That's something that we have to do for ourselves right. as patients right. is to educate ourselves about mm -hmm. what the numbers mean and, and mm -hmm. to monitor our kidney health and that we know what those numbers are and mean, just like we will with our blood pressure, our blood sugar, and any other number of things that we're involved with. Right. So, so you have- The bottom line all is that the patient has the right to know. Absolutely. You have the right to know about yourself and your right. numbers. Because no I, one is coming to save us, and we're going to catch what you're about to say, uh, Dr. Davis, in the third in the third section uh, of this interview. So you've been listening to On the Record with Kevin and Tiffany on 930 AM, The Answer. <laughs>